Astro Boy, it's been a few minutes since your fight, man. How are you feeling? Yeah, I feel ecstatic. Um, super happy to show you that I do have striking. Um, obviously, I did get hit still um, at some point, but my hands are coming along, my guard's getting better, my movement's getting better, so I'm going to be a problem for all these guys in the division. Yeah, I mean, in that first round, there was a few, you know, pocket, you guys were just in the pocket slinging, <laughs> slinging leather at each other. Did any of those shots rock you at all? or? Yeah, after, after I heard him, um, like, the shot in the first that I heard him the worst, um, I got a little bit excited, as expected, and... Um, yeah, he caught me a real good one, wobbled my feet a little bit, lost a little bit of balance, but nothing nothing crazy. What was the game plan coming in, coming into the fight? Um, my plan was just to mix it up. Like I wanted to have good, solid guards because um, he does like to throw the overhand over the top of my jab and um, wild left hook, so I just wanted to make sure that my guards were in the right spot. I was moving my feet, I was creating angles, trying to hit him on the end of my shots, but <clears throat> don't neglect my grappling. I can shoot, mix it up as well as anybody else in the world, so I needed to show that. <clears throat> and I like that you keep bringing up that, you know, you have hands because everyone knows you have very elite grappling, but your striking has, you, you haven't showed it off so much. And you, I, th I believe you said it in, a, in an interview or a promo leading up to this fight that you've just been improving, 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 especially since you got into the UFC, you've been improving. So I guess, was it just relieving to show that, you know, you have knockout power and your hands are just getting better? Yeah, of course. Um... I mean, a lot of the submissions I've got in my career have come because I hurt the opponent, they shoot on me, and then I submit them. So um, it just, you don't get necessarily get seen on my record, but I do have, whether it's power, accuracy, whatever you want to call it, I do have decent striking, at least offensively, and I'm working on everything to make sure that um, I'm good everywhere. The hardcore fans have known you've been one of the best flyweights outside of the UFC. Three fights in the UFC, you're going to be top 10 next week. Like, did you see, like, did you, see you being like your route this fast when you got here like did you think you, you'd make such a big impact obviously I didn't expect to be put into the top or get a top uh, 10 ranked fighter as my first fight I expected to fight maybe two or three times uh, first and then after that maybe get a top 15 guy but the way everything worked out uh, with COVID and um, with the visa issues I had I felt like I was losing time out of my prime so to get that opportunity was great and to obviously to make the impact I've made was obviously even better. And I just wanted to ask you you know obviously I mean you're used to in Canada in a full arena then Madison Square Garden now you're fighting in the small apex but but uh, ironically you're supposed to be on a contender series and fight here for your contract in this building right so how is it fighting in a smaller cage in, in the apex? Honestly, I didn't even notice when the fight started. I did notice that I could hear his corner. I heard him say, um, I'll go to the leg kick, the leg kick's there, uh, over the top. I could hear different things the corner was saying, so that gave me a little insight into what he was planning, um, which for me obviously helped. Obviously, he could hear what my corner probably said too, but I just felt super dialed in, ready to go, and yeah, the lack of a crowd didn't make a difference. <laughs> and uh, he called out Brandon Moreno. Um, what about that fight excites you? Yeah, he's one of the best in the world, former title holder. Um, he just can't, he obviously coming off two losses, and I'm looking to be into the, uh, get myself into the top five. So I think a win over him not only improves my confidence because I'm beating somebody that was at that level, but really pushed me into that title contention picture. What did you think of his performance against Roy Val? I didn't think that was his best performance. I don't know if it was the range that was giving him trouble or... Yeah, I, I'm not, not sure. He looked a little bit sloppy in that fight. Usually he's a really good boxer. He looked, yeah, average average on what, last week. When, when would you like to return? As soon as possible. Um, obviously, the Sphere is a huge event. That's UFC Noche. He's Mexican. That would be absolutely epic. Um, but if they come to Australia, I'd love to fight in Australia as well, have my home crowd cheering me on and get to see me fight live. Obviously, you like fighting in Australia because it's just your home, right? But do you enjoy coming over to the States and, and, and fighting in America? Yeah, of course. It's a free holiday, except instead of paying for it, I just have to fight some dudes. So like, what more could you ask for? And finally, for me, I just wanted your thoughts on the flyweight division. Obviously, there's no clear next fight for Pantoja. So if you were the matchmaker, who, who would fight Pantoja in Brazil? I think Makaev makes the most sense, assuming he wins tonight. I haven't seen if he's fought or not, but he makes the most sense. Pantoja's called him out. If he looks impressive, I think he fights uh, in, the, in the Brazil card. But um, if for whatever reason that doesn't come to fruition, I, I really don't know who's next. I don't want to see Roy Val fight him again straight away. I may have one more win before he fights 
Roy Vile again. Congrats, Steve. Thank you very much.